Ecclesiasticus 7 and 23. Ecclesiasticus 7 and 23. I'm going to deal with 6 and 23 for the, for the son. It says, Give ear, my son, receive my advice, and refuse not my counsel. And put thy feet into her fetters, and thy neck into her chain. Fetters is like shackles. And is talking about being disciplined. Contrary to being slothful. Remember an evil son? Gonna be dishonored to his father? Bow down that shoulder and bear her. Meaning carry her and be not grieved with her bonds and being disciplined, which is contrary to being slothful, lazy, and unmotivated. Come unto her with thy whole heart and keep her ways with all thy power. Search and seek, and she shall be made known unto thee. You gotta study. And when thou hast got hold of her, let her not go. It's wisdom. Keep studying. Show yourself approved to the most high. Second Timothy 2.15. For at the last thou shalt find her rest. And that shall be turned to thy joy. Then shall her fetters, her discipline, be a strong defense for thee. And her chains a robe of glory, wisdom. For there is a golden ornament upon her, and her bands are purple lace, crown of royalty. Thou shalt put her on as a robe of honor, and shalt put her about thee as a crown of joy. My son, if thou wilt, Thou shalt be taught, see? And if thou wilt apply her, thy mind, apply, apply your mind, thou shalt be pudent. You're going to be wise. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thine ear, I mean you listen, thou shalt be wise. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. Say, stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. Be willing to hear every righteous discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. Therefore, you should be knowing this Bible. Any questions, you should be having questions. You should, or else not, you should be knowing. If I ask you a question, you should better know what, what it's talking about. And if thou see if a man of understanding Get thee betimes quickly of sin unto him, and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. You can find a man of understanding, you're supposed to be getting get quickly unto him and wear the steps of his doors out. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Most High, and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thine heart, your mind, and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. See? That's why you seek it. You say you got to study. You got to ask. That's the most fun. Go to James, the first chapter, in verse 5. James 1 and 5. If, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the most high. Pray to the most high. That give it to all men, liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. You got to believe. Not wavering. You can't waver. 
For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the most high. Because you double-minded, because here it comes again. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. See? You double-minded. You want to be sure about what you need to deal with and bring forth the belief that you believe in the most high. Well, I'll show my shot, cut a shot. So Ecclesiasticus 7 and 23. Has thou children? Instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. What I mean? That's respect. Make them respect you from their youth. Has thou daughters? Have a care of their body and show not thyself cheerful toward them. You got daughters, say so you got a care of their bodies. If they know how to take care of their bodies and don't be like right now, shoot. Man. Sad to say, man. People are. The things that the young children are doing now and the way they walk around, half naked, take care of their bodies. Show them how they're supposed to be covered up. Cover themselves up. Now you already know how. You know what I mean? Young children going around, you wonder why all this stuff happening. You need to be coming to the laws of the old side. That's why it told us in Psalm 78 and 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, our forefathers, that they should make them known to their children. These laws are the most high, that the generations to come might know them even the children which should be born. That's male, child, and made child. It says, who should arise and declare them to their children that they might set their hope in the Most High. They might have faith in the Most High and not forget the works of the Most High, but keep His commandments. And the commandments show us everything, moral laws, civil laws, dietary laws, ceremonial laws. But our children supposed to learn, know these, they can keep the commandments. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, they set their mind aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with the Most High. See? That's why we got to teach our children the laws, or else they're going to be raised to think that all the things that's wicked is okay, which is contrary to the Most High. That's where this world is set up right now. Going back to Ecclesiastes 7 and 24. Verse 23. Has thou children? Instruct them. That's why I just read Psalm 785 down. Instruction to keep the laws of the Most High. Teach them the laws of the Most High. And bow down their neck from their youth. You know. The main bow down they need to have is they neck down, bow down and looking at these books. Making sure that you check them. Watching over them. That's what it says, As thou daughters, have a care of their body, and show not thyself cheerful toward them. You know, allowing them to get away with everything, and laughing at the things they be doing, like they be laughing. I see different videos, boy, I've seen in the past, where they just twerking and doing all the wicked stuff that they be doing now. Little children, they laughing at them. They laughing at them. Think it's funny. It ain't funny. It's not funny at all. Ain't nothing cute about that. It says, marry thy daughter, and so shall thou have performed a weighty matter. You know, look at all the women that's not married. And get married, then get divorced. That's what I say, marry thy daughter, and so shall thou have performed a weighty matter. It's a weighty matter. I say, marry our daughters. But give her to a man of understanding. Give her your daughter to a man of understanding. That understand the law such commandments of the most high doing right by her and the family. How thou a wife? 
after thy mind. You have a woman. Your woman is after your mind. Forsake her not. But give not thyself over to a light woman. Don't give yourself over to an airhead. It's saying. A woman that don't want to follow your mind, man. You hear what that says? Have thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not. But give not thyself over to a light woman. A woman that do not want to follow your mind. Don't want to do what you're telling them to do in righteousness. So don't give your mind, don't give your, yourself over to a woman like that. Because she's just like a Gentile. She's going to turn you away from the most high. Look. Ecclesiastes 26. And 13. It says, The grace of a wife delight of her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. See? A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Most High, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. I say, don't give your... Don't, this is what it says. It says, thou a wife after thy mind. And Ecclesiastes 7 and 24. Or 26, excuse me. As thou a wife after thy mind, forsake her not. Don't forsake a woman that's after your mind. But give not thyself over to a light woman. A woman that don't want to be as it says here. And Ecclesiastes, we're going to go through this in many verses. Ecclesiastes 26 and 13. The grace of a wife divided for her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. A silent and loving woman. A silent. Woo, can you get that today? But they're there. A silent and loving woman. It's a gift of the most high. Woo. Knowing when to shut your mouth <laughs> and loving your man. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the most high. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. See? A shame faced, I mean a humble and faithful woman. Especially following the mind of a man of the most high. See, faithful to this man is a double grace. And her continent mind cannot be valued. See? Her continent mind cannot be valued. Because her mind, first and foremost, is after the mind, following the mind of a righteous man. With his understanding. It says, this is a double grace. As the sun, when it rises in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. See? That's what's so beautiful about the woman. When she ordered in her house, she got it in order. Order in the house. Let's go into it. Uh, Ecclesiasticus twenty-two and four. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband, but she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. So this woman is living she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness but a wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband so let's look at a wise daughter let's go into the book of Tobit 
and we're gonna, I don't know if some of you know about the story, I'm gonna try and go into it. Uh, let's look at Tobit, the second chapter. I'm gonna read verse one. Now when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me, with my son Tobias, it's Toby, his wife Anna and his son Tobias, in the Feast of Pentecost. Now we know the Feast of Pentecost when you read uh, Acts 2 and 5, let you know, well I can read verse 1 so you'll know that this isn't talking about every nation, it's not talking about all of the other people outside of the 12 tribes of Israel because we look at Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, this is later. This is the this is not at the time we're reading here in total, but this is later. This is after Amashiach Yavashai had died and went to the right hand side of the most high. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Who were these? Who was this all the certain number? Verse 5. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Who was there? Jews. So the, whole, the, the Feast of Pentecost is for the Jews and the Israelites. Okay? And all the men that came, when you read verse 9, from all different places. So let's go back into Tobit. 2. Verse 1. Now when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me, with my son Tobias in the Feast of Pentecost, which is the Holy Feast of the seven weeks. And then you got to count seven weeks, the next day is the day of Pentecost, which is the Holy Feast of the seven weeks. There was a good dinner prepared me, in the which I sat down to eat. And when I saw abundance of meat, I said to my son, go and bring what poor man soever thou shalt find out of our brethren, meaning of the children of Israel, who was mindful of the Most High, who was a spiritual man, and lo, I tarry for thee, I'll wait for you. But he came again and said, Father, one of our nation is strangled. Our nation, one of our nation that follow the Feast of Pentecost, which is the Feast of the Most High, which was given to the children of Israel. But he came again and said, verse 3, Father, one of our nation is strangled and is cast out in the marketplace. Then, be, then before I had tasted of any meat, before he ate anything, I shared, I started up, excuse me, and took him up into a room until the going down of the sun. Then I returned and washed myself and ate my meat in heaviness, sadness, remembering that prophecy of Amos as he said your feet shall be turned into mourning and all your mirth into lamentation therefore I wept and started crying and after the going down of the sun I went and made a grave and buried him he buried him after the going down of the sun he buried him Remember the Feast of Pentecost, and when the sun, that's from evening to evening, when the sun went down, it was dark, he went and buried him. But my neighbors mocked me and said, this man is not yet afraid to be put to death for this matter, who fled away, and yet, lo, he buried the dead again. He buried the dead again. The same night, also I returned from the burial and slept by the wall of my courtyard be, being polluted and my face was uncovered. Because you know, you, 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 you defile when you deal with a dead body for seven days. So, and I knew not that there were sparrows in the wall and mine eyes being opened, the sparrows muted warm dung into mine eyes and a whiteness came into mine eyes. And I went to the physicians, but they helped me not. Moreover, Archicarus did nourish me until I went into Elimius. And my wife Anna did take woman's work to do. Uh-oh. 
wait a minute, I thought the woman was supposed to be at home 